Hello! This is the final product in the Andy Warhol inspired GIMP project. It's what it'll look like at the end. To begin with, we're going to start with a new letter size document. So File New, drop down to Letter Size because we're printing on letter size paper. Make it portrait oriented and click OK. That's going to open the document that we're going to be working on. Now we're going to open the picture we got off the internet of someone's famous face. I chose Steve Jobs, who happened to die earlier this year, as the person I wanted to use for my project. Notice Steve's face has a white background or a light colored background. A black background does not work very well for this project. I'm going to go over to the rectangle selection tool. I'm going to make sure to go down and make sure the check mark is next to fixed and that aspect ratio is in on the menu. It says one to one. This is going to give us a square pretty much. So make sure that's checked the whole project. I'm going to draw the square over Steve Jobs' face. I'm going to make sure to give it a little room above the hair. So you have some space up there. And you're going to go right under the chin of the person. Try not to go off the sides of the picture. If you cannot make a square that fits, you're going to have to find another picture. Now go to Edit Copy. We're going to copy this picture. Go to our letter size document it and edit paste that picture in. Now remember it's going to be a floating selection so you need to click Add New Layer in order to paste that selection down. Alright, so you want to make sure you paste that down otherwise it's going to get attached to the background and that's not good at all. We're going to come over and grab the Scale tool. You're going to click on the face. Make sure the chain is linked in between the width and the height. For this project, you're going to type 2.25, um, make sure it's inches, into that and click scale and it'll make a 2.25 by 2.25 square. I'm going to grab the move tool. I'm going to move my face up to the left hand corner. I want it about an inch from the top and about a quarter inch or 0.25 inches from the left hand side. If you can't see your rulers, go up to view go down and put the check mark next to show rulers to make sure you can see them. All right, next thing we need to do is um, desaturate the face. If you have any colors, we want to get rid of those colors by using the desaturate. So I'm going to go up to colors and I'm going to go down to desaturate. Um, I don't have to do this on mine because it's black and white, but just to show you colors, desaturate. When the dialog box pops up, all you need to do is click OK. Um, all the settings are good there. Click OK and it will take the color away. Uh, just ignore that for me. Alright, next thing we need to do is go to Threshold. So Colors, go down to Threshold. This is going to turn your face into only black and white. Pretty cool. Alright, using the Threshold slider um, further to the right will give you more black, further to to the left will give you more white. Um, you want to keep some of the details so you can recognize the person, um, but you want some space in there so you can add some color. So usually right around the middle. Now I'm going to grab Select by Color from the toolbox. I'm going to come over to my face. I'm going to click on the white right outside my face. This is going to select all the white. Now I can click Delete on my keyboard, or I can go to Edit, Clear, and what that's going to do is it's going to delete all the white from around my face, leaving me with just the black outline. To get rid of the ants marching, I'm just going to go to Select None. Now I'm ready to go. I'm going to come over to my Layers panel. I'm going to duplicate this layer two times. So I'm going to click on the pasted layer. If I look down, I can duplicate that layer right in the Layers panel. Click, click. Now I have three copies. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Move tool, click on the black part of the person so you don't move your background, and drag one over around the middle. We can move it in just a minute. Alright, now that we have that one done, we're going to go back, click on the other layer, drag it over to the right hand side. Now on this one I still want to make sure that it's about a quarter of an inch away from the right hand side of the page. I'm going to move the middle one 
right in between the two that are lined up on the left and the right. This will be setting up my grid for the rest of them, so you want to take some time making sure that you get all these right. Now I'm going to go to create a new layer. I'm going to create a new layer, and then I'm going to drag it underneath my face cutouts. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. It's still at a fixed square, so make sure it's still clicked fixed. I'm going to come over and I'm going to drag that square over my first face. I'm going to try to line up the square so that I have a little space above the head. Grab the paint bucket. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab a color that I like. I'm going to start with the paint bucket and I'm going to paint bucket the whole square just one color. Ta-da! All right. Now I'm going to grab the paintbrush. With the paintbrush, I'm using a calligraphy style brush. You can use a round brush if you want to. First, I'm going to start with um, maybe a blue. With the blue paintbrush, I'm going to come over and paint his face, all of his skin color, in um, to be that color blue. If you notice, the blue is a cool color compared to the warm color of the red behind, and so it's making a stark contrast um, between the warm colors and the cool colors. Um, cool colors tend to recede, so it seems to sink back. The red seems to pop off the page a little bit, so that's something to really work with while you're working on these pictures. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to choose another color, maybe, oh, I don't know, like a green? Lime green? Sure. I'm going to come over and I'm going to go right over his eyebrows. So I'm adding some details of some other cool colors on the inside. So I'm going to go over both eyebrows with the green. And now I'm going to go over the hair. I'm going to make the hair green as well. Notice I'm going outside the lines just a tad. Um, almost like it doesn't match up. I'm going to go across his mustache, down around his beard. I'm going to make all his hair green or lime green. Now I'm going to go pick a color, maybe purple. And now I'm going to make his lips purple. So you need to be changing the, the skin color or the face color, um, the hair color, change the lip color, and you can change the eyes as well. Um, but you need to be changing more than just two things on each section. All right, you'll continue doing the same thing across all three top layers by adding new layers for each. You want each color scheme to be on a new layer. So you'll continue by creating new layers and putting each color scheme um, underneath the face layers and making each one on its own new layer. Um, but I'll let you do those on your own. I'm not going to show you go through each one. What you need to do now though is we need to make multiples of the faces. So click on the layers that we made of all three faces and duplicate one of each of those layers. Now you're going to link, using the chain link, the new three layers you just made. Grab the move tool, click on the black part of one of the faces, and you're going to move those down. Since you've chain linked those new duplicated layers together, you're going to be able to move all three at the same time, maintaining the distance between them. Pull them down about a quarter inch below the first row. Now you're going to do it one more time. You're going to click on the layer that you just duplicated. So you're going to duplicate the top layer, go down to the one that was linked before. Oh, I did one too many, sorry. Click on the other linked layer, add a duplicate layer, scroll down a bit on your layers panel, grab the one you just did, duplicate that, now you only need three of them linked together, so unlink the original three you just pulled down. 
go grab the move tool and drag the black part and this is going to drag three more of them down okay they're the same distance apart again these should be about a quarter inch below the ones in the top so I'm going to go and unlink the layers because I don't want any chain links linked together um, it's not necessary scroll all the way to the bottom of your layers panel click on a layer that had a color scheme on it so it's below everything else um, and now I can go and start adding color schemes to the rest of my boxes I'm going to grab the rectangle tool which is actually a square tool right now draw a square and I want to make sure that the squares are about the same size as the ones from the top row um, you want to try to make it look consistent okay make sure there's a little space above the head grab the bucket tool choose a different color use the bucket fill to fill that square um, think about your color schemes too if you have a warm color do you want maybe a cool color next to it um, how do you want to line up your color combinations in your composition in this one I'm going to change the black outline I'm going to change the color so I'm going to find the layer that the black outline is on I'm going to grab the select by color tool So once I have the select by color tool, I can come over, I can click on the black, and it's going to select the outline of the person's face. So once I have dancing ants marched around there, I can grab the paintbrush, it's just easier, choose a different color, I'm actually just going to choose white for this one, and then with the paintbrush, if I just start painting, um, it's only going to paint inside those black outlines, inside that selection that I've chosen. Um, so that works a little bit better than trying to bucket fill it. So just paint over it. Alright, to get rid of the ants, go up to select, go to none, get rid of those ants. And you still need to add some more details. That's just changing one thing. I'm going to pick another color. This time I'm going to keep with the cool color scheme for now. Um, I want to make sure to go back into my layers panel, scroll down, and click back on the color scheme. I don't want to be painting on top. I want to be painting underneath um, the black outlines or white outlines here. So I'm going to make his hair blue, so I'll do his beard and go up around his mustache. Go around his hair. I'm going to go up and around. Oops, I got out of the lines a little bit. I'll have to grab the eraser and go back and clean that up. Um, don't forget to go up inside. Um, I'm going to go grab another color, maybe a yellow, just to add a little um, contrast, a little brightness. And I'm going to do his eyebrows or his eyes and add some color in there. I'm going to add his finger back gold. I like the idea of putting his finger gold. So I'm going to use my eraser tool. I'm going to go back and I'm going to clean up that top edge where I went outside the square. Um, I want to make sure that each of these look pristine. So continue working. This is the final project. Um, when you are done, please save it to the Art Lab. Go File, Save As. When you turn it in, save it as a JPEG. Make sure your name's on it, RebeccaWarhol.jpg. While you're working on it, please just save it as Warhol.xcf. Do not save it to a JPEG until you are completely finished with it. Otherwise, you will lose all your layers, and you will not be able to paint behind your faces. Please continue working, adding new layers underneath all the faces, and make sure that you are thinking about color schemes. If you notice on mine, I've got 
some that are warm colors, some that are all cool colors, some that have a mixture of complementary colors like blue and orange. That one looks completely different than the paler, more uh, monochromatic tones that I've used in the lower gold one um, or yellowish one. So really think about how you can use color to make each of these squares look different. Have fun with it. It should be a good time. All right, take it easy, guys.